Hi, I'm Alex Archbull, and I've been buying and selling antiques since I was nine years old. From basements to scrapyards, I'll look just about anywhere I can to find lost antiques and collectibles. And sometimes I'll go big and buy everything. With my wife and kids, we run an antique shop in Edmonton, Alberta, Canada, filled with some of the most unique items we can find. I never know what's going to happen or who I'm going to meet. This is our life, this is our adventure, and this is Curiosity Inc. From home, honey. Hi everyone and welcome to today's episode. I am very excited because um, I got some stuff from these folks that came in the other day. They were clearing out the attic of an old house that was about to be torn down and they brought in this cardboard box full of stuff they pulled out of the attic. I think it's super cool. Um, we're gonna go through the box together and, and uh, see what's inside. I poked around a little bit and I was like, yeah, this stuff looks good. <laughs> But um, we're going to have our first look fully through the bags and boxes right now and see what's there. So uh, without further ado, let's do a little digging and see what came out of the attic. The crazy and cool thing, and we're about to go through these boxes, but the crazy and cool thing about this stuff is that it was sitting in an attic of a house. The people bought the house with the intentions of tearing it down and putting a new place up. In the meantime, for the last three years, they've been renting it out to various different people. And all that time, nobody ever went through the attic until they were finally ready to do the uh, demolition and start thinking about that. So these boxes were kind of trapped up there and nobody knew that they even existed. Um, and now I have them <laughs> and I'm excited to dig through. So uh, let's start digging. Right off the top, we see a cardboard box game for the TV show, 77 Sunset Strip. Uh, the show came out in, I think 1958 or so. This set came out in 1960, so it's fairly early. Um, they were private detectives in Los Angeles, and it was uh, on for about six seasons. Really neat to find a uh, box set like this, although it's been taped and the tape is kind of coming off. Um, it's still pretty neat. In fact, I could use this, I could bring this box into my hairstylist and say, yeah, I'd like the uh, Edward and Burns, please, <laughs> and get the floop. Uh, future hairstyles to be had off of this box, but what a, what a fun thing. And uh, for the most part, board games are fairly collectible. Um, it depends, of course, if they are complete. Which this one looks like it's got the private detectives. Look, the scores from whoever played the last game are on here. So it looks like it's pretty well all there. It looks like it's laid out essentially just like Clue. <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and guess that this is essentially Clue, but a 77 sunset strip version of it. Neat though. Sometimes it's good to check underneath the box flaps and stuff because you never know when there's something tucked underneath. Actually, before I go any further, I'm gonna set this box down so I can uh, sort onto the table. Well, even the box it's in, Ward's Airline, solid state AM FM stereo tuner amplifier. I always tell the age of stuff based on the box they're stored in too. Okay, let's get this down. Okay, we'll set this off to the side. And we've got another cool set. Look at the cool artwork on that. Car racing game, Formula One. Pretty neat. Yeah, 1960s. I'm gonna go ahead and guess. It's Canadian edition, Toronto, Canada. It's a neat set. Some comic books in terrible condition. Let's see though. The date's always on the inside here, typically is. So this is from 1964. Would have been a fairly early Archie. Look, there's a Millie, the model, 12 cent. But the, uh, these are all in pretty awful condition. Tarzan with a painted cover. And painted cover means that it's, uh, somebody actually had to do the artwork for it. It's not a photograph. They went to photo covers later on but conditions not so good. But even if, if there was a Spider-Man, like the first appearance of Spider-Man, even without the cover, that's worth a pile of money. Oh look, the Flintstone sticker fund, push out, stick on in color. It looks like somebody started to do it. My sister Heather is a big fan of the Flintstones. That's kind of neat. 
this is a Whitman published, published book, so I don't know if it'll have the date on the inside, probably not, but that's probably from around 1960 or somewhere around there. Oh, 1961, look, I was pretty close. Very close with my gas. Well, that's the only, one, only comic book in reasonable shape right now, World of Wheels. Kind of cool artwork on the front with the motorcycle guys all piling up there. The Cage of Eagles. 12 cent comic that puts it in the early to mid 60s. I'm gonna set, separate that one out, it's a little bit better. And then this uh, just looks like your typical sort of glass picture. This would have been handed out um, and it was a gift probably from the Central Auto Top and Upholstery Company here in town. You can tell it's an oldie because the phone number is only five digits long. 1949 is when this is from. Looks like it's all there, it's just taken apart. Okay. Let's see what's in bag number one. Set that aside. And we've got cap guns. Lots and lots of cap guns. The Pioneer. The nice Bakelite sort of handle on it. A whole bag of cap guns. Oh, look, that's Gene Autry. It's too bad the hammer is broken off on it. Usually branded stuff can go for a little bit more. Look, Roy Rogers. There's a pirate sort of pistol right there. Now, when you see a gun like that and it's missing the, uh, the handle off of it, you can either make it or... Uh, if you have a parts gun, you could pull it off of that, but that's totally different. Worth fixing up though. Buffalo Bill, another Gene Autry. Oh, and this Gene Autry gun would have had a uh, revolving barrel. That would have been a really, like a nice quality cap gun. Another Roy Rogers. It's too bad they've all, a lot of them have some damage to them. Otherwise, these would all be very collectible. But condition is everything. There's another Roy Rogers. I think that matches. I guess that matches that. So it would have been a matched set. Well, that's a shame. And there's even some little guys in here too. Too bad on condition that on a lot of these, they have broken bits. But, you know, things can be repaired. You can find parts and pieces and put these back together. And it would be worthwhile because... Surprisingly, some of these guns can be worth like up to $100 each if they're in good condition. Let's see. Other than little whistles and stuff, that's about it out of that bag. Pretty neat though. Let's go to bag number two. And we've got toys. Oh, how I love me some toys. Little tin... It's almost like a Lincoln. The battery operated and a friction. Friction drive. It's a little Mercedes. And it looks like it's uh, seen better days. The mechanisms come loose on the inside. But still, it's a 300 SL Mercedes. A little lumber truck. This is a rubber toy, uh, late 40s. And there's all sorts of toy cars in here. Oh, I thought this was gonna be, a, when I saw it in there, I thought, oh, I wonder if there's any Hot Wheels, but this stuff looks a little bit older than Hot Wheels. And let's see, there's a Binky toy. These sort of bags, this is a, this is just a bag of fun for me. Look at all this cool stuff. And it's all 1940s, 1950s era. That's probably a London toy. Yes, it is. It was like Canada's version of Tootsie Toy. Auburn rubber, our core toys made in USA. There are people who collect the rubber toys too. I mean, heck, there's a collector for just about everything out there. There's some old, old, old stuff. Dinky toy airplane? Yep. 
and more plastic toys. Of course, generally it's the metal stuff that's a little bit more on the valuable side. I might just dump this bag out and we can kind of go through it and see what, what's inside. Let's just dump this out. See what we have. Well, another dinky toy. Missing the back off of it. That should have like either a flat deck or a tilt deck truck. Towing service. Oh, neat little SO truck. Little fuel tanker. And a Popeye tank. Popeye the Sailor Man made his debut in 1929 and would entertain people for years to come. But what you might not know is that Popeye's artist, his creator, lived in a small town. And who lived in this town with him? Why, Rocky Fiegel. And if you think there's a resemblance, that's because there is. Popeye was based on Rocky Fiegel, who had one eye, a prominent chin, smoked a pipe, and got into fistfights. Sound familiar? Well, sometimes truth is stranger than fiction. This is Mark's, I believe? Linemar, yeah, Mark's. King Features Syndicate, made in Japan, so this is probably early 50s or late 40s. It's like Popeye's strong enough he can pick up the whole tank, so he must go. Oh, looks like the motor's actually still good in this thing. I'll wind it up and see what it does. Well, it's not moving. Oh, I see. He flips it. So maybe that's meant to, oh I see, Popeye's probably bent a little bit. So those wheels can't touch the ground. But he repeatedly flips the tank. Well, that's kind of cool, it's neat that it's still working too. Okay, I've given Popeye just a gentle bend so he'll sit flat. Let's see what he does now. There it goes. <laughs> Popeye, you gotta stop flipping the tank around. So he kind of drives in circles. Oh, I get it. It's meant to roll completely over. See? It does somersaults. Let's see if it does it. Because I have other stuff on this here. This is meant to flip completely back over again. So Popeye is completely flipping this tank. What a neat little toy. And you'd think that over the years, that side of the Popeye would have been completely worn off from scraping on the ground and carpet and gravel. So this toy is probably not seen a whole lot of use. That's pretty neat. Well, enough playing with Popeye tanks. Let's leave that over there for now. The other things that came out of this bag um, are a whole bunch of uh, metal London toys, late 40s, early 50s. Uh, a lot of these little plastic toys, which really aren't worth the whole pile. Oh, look at that. That's the that's the back off of that little matchbox truck. Seen better days. It's missing the pin, but it's all there. There are some little matchbox toys, including this miniature Japanese toy that reminds me of a uh, Shuko Piccolo toy, but it's uh, made in Japan. A couple dinky toys, some tin stuff, you know. Some neat things. Things that I don't uh, come across every day because of the age of this stuff. Usually by now, somebody would have gone through, sorted, separated out all this stuff. It's uh, really fun to be the guy that gets to go through it all. But that's not all there is in this box. We've got Noma bubble lights. So the little, they have oil in them and they kind of bubble as they heat up. So a really old set of Noma Christmas lights. Look, she looks impressed. Woo! It's a bag of papers. Let's see what's in here. I've got a couple of the uh, Topps license plate cards. They did these funny little sets using 1953 to show people what the different license plates from around the world looked like. TCG, Tops Company. Couple of cards. That, this is a trading card too. Terrible shape. This is from, uh, yeah, the World of Wheels. I have this set somewhere. Looks like some clippings out of uh, 
Star Amazing. So what's this? Looks like a, um, maybe a ticket. Yeah, it's got somebody's name on it. Must have been a ticket to a game. To check that one out. Let's see. Just pictures of celebrities and stuff. Very subtle things. Okay, I want to go through the rest of this though. Well, condition's not great, but that's a howdy doody dilly dally coloring book. <laughs> My dad collected Howdy Doody stuff, amongst other things. 1955, yeah, this is all from the era when my dad would have been a, a little kid. Magazine, Screen Stars. Audrey Hepburn, is love everything? Pat Boone says, I had to elope. And Joan Collins talks about sexy men. Oh, they're dead sexy. <laughs> Well, um, the covers of tabloid type magazines sure haven't changed a whole lot, have they? There's back covers kind of tattered on that. It's interesting to look through this old paperwork. It won't have much value because of the condition, but the comics, Andy Pandy, 1957, instructions for probably some kind of toy, yeah, for a train layout from the Marks company. Well, I do have Marks trains here. I could keep that, use that for something. Oh, look. That's a soda jerk hat. Kind of neat little paper hat for when you worked at a soda fountain. Probably have to change your hats out every day. It's got advertising on it. That's pretty cool. William Holden. A little trading card. I'll set that with the others. Instructions for things. Some of this might end up just being garbage, but you got to go through it all just to make sure you know know what you've got. The Robin Hood Oats Trophy awarded annually in Boys Young Hockey Leagues. Put that with the cards. Another little bag with stuff. Uncle Wiggly. Another coloring book, kind of like the Howdy Doody. A few more trading cards in here. I'm going to dump this out. Oh, lots of pictures. Actually, that kind of imploded on me, went all on the floor. There's some cuttings out of magazines in here that I wasn't expecting to flop out like this. I wonder if it's recipes or who knows. This feels to me like it might have been a school assignment, like where they go make you cut out stuff out of magazines and bring it in and put together a meal or something. <laughs> I vaguely remember doing some kind of assignment like that too, but there's random stuff cut out. And then I imagine just stuff that the young lad would have thought was cool, like old car pictures and things like that. Now we'll go through, make sure there's nothing uh, of great consequence in here. See why they decided to keep what they kept. Okay. Engine rebuilding a machine shop service catalog, 1957. What do we have here? Baz Bazooka baloney bubble gum. I remember Bazooka Joe. And I guess they teamed up with Archie Comics for a little while. But look, here's the catalog of stuff you could get from Bazooka Joe. <laughs> Swell for bike riding, air combat goggles. A hundred Bazooka Joe comics you had to mail in or 20 cents in five comics. So I guess if you saved your comics and mailed them in, you get funny little uh, camera, two way space phones, a baseball ring, a sportsman's sheath knife. <laughs> oh, neat. Makes me wish I had a whole bunch of Bazooka Joe bubble gum to mail in and get all these cool goodies that are there. 100 comics, that's chewing a lot of gum. So you could get a compass, two bladed knife, an angle head flashlight. That's kind of nifty. But that's not all. We've also got the Castle Attack game in original box. And it looks like the guys are in there. Actually, it's probably not a game. It's just a uh, play set, but still pretty neat. And a little tin with some spare wheels. Those might come in handy. 
to see if any of the toys I got are missing their wheels. What's this? Great Northern Fancy Red Sockeye Salmon. Oh, it's a piggy bank. Save with ocean products. Well, you can hide your coins in that, and I don't think many people would want to take your salmon can, but maybe a good place to disguise it. Cool little advertising piece. And it's not fishy. Junior Pedal Pushers Club, Skilled Rider. I guess that's a little license plate. You go on the back of your bicycle. And we've got a little wind-up dog who's seen better days. His ears are missing. Army figure, Pluto. I thought he looked like he was a squeaky toy, but. Part of a salt and shaker, salt and pepper shaker set. Deluxe service station here in Edmonton. And a Magnus harmonica, the Indian chief harmonica brand. Don't imagine our indigenous peoples be playing a lot of harmonica. You never know. I guess they put logos on anything. Angel Glow illuminated unbreakable plastic. <gasps> it said it was unbreakable, but it's got a chip in it. Maybe that was to, looks like there's some little accessories that need to go in there. Box isn't in the best shape, but it has its box. Another cap gun, a big cap gun at the bottom. little tiny Coke bottle they used to give out as a promo with the bottling plants to kids and a whole pile of kick cola bottle caps for whatever reason strange but I've got this big pile to sort through still and get away and, and put aside but what I want to do is go through these boxes right here before I'm done so before I open this box to show you what's inside look at the box itself it's a Bobby Hall autographed, approved hockey skate box. Now, there would have been some old skates in there, size seven, but the box itself is in really good shape. It's got Bobby Hall in there. I'm sure somebody who's a hockey fan would buy that. But what interests me about this isn't so much the box, although the box is cool. It's what's written on the box. It was sold at WW Arcade Limited here in town, which does not exist anymore. It was a big hardware store, but it says GI Joe. And when we open it up, Bum, 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 bum. There we go. It's full, packed full of original G.I. Joe 12 inch toys. Now you've got your green beret and he's got his bazooka and uh, he looks to be in excellent condition. Is the early G.I. Joe has a uh, hard head, not a squishy head, but he does have the scar on him and lots of accessories. And the really beautiful thing about this is there's a ton of G.I. Joe accessories from the 1960s that have never been opened. That's new old stock. I mean, it's untouched. So there's an extra green beret set. Combat engineer set with the uh, tripod there. It's just astounding to me that this stuff is still sealed in packaging after all these years. So tons and tons, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, there's got to be about 10 or so of these accessory sets, brand new in the package. 1964. And nobody ever thought they wanted to play with the, uh, with these, I guess. There's the bazooka set. Lots of instructions and manuals. This is probably the best find out of everything that I got here today so far. This G.I. Joe stuff mint in the package like that, it's like hen's teeth. It's really, really hard to find. Um, so I'll have to do a little bit of research and figure out what this stuff is all worth, but I know that some of these sets uh, can go for pretty good dollar because they are uh, unopened and unused, even though they're accessory sets. So we're gonna set that all aside. Look, here's even the little, uh, I guess that's for, that probably was applied or stuck onto some of these. So even the little stickers that fell off the packaging are still in the bottom of the box here. That's crazy cool. And last but not least, anytime you see a big Star Wars box like this and it's got some age to it, you gotta pick it up. So it's the Darth Vader plastic mask 
in the original packaging. Um, this is from 1982, I think, somewhere around there. But in, like, brand new condition. <laughs> A really, really neat piece of uh, Star Wars, I guess, not history, but... Uh, I don't know, there's a lot of Star Wars fans out there who would love to probably have a helmet like that. Brand new in its packaging. That would have been a pretty deluxe helmet for a kid to wear at the time. It's not just a, a cheap front mask. So pretty nifty stuff. I think um, I'm going to have my work cut out for me to uh, price this and figure out what it's all worth. There's still another bag I'm actually going to go through before I sign off here. So I'm going to set the G.I. Joe aside and go through this little plastic bag of goodies. Let's see what we got. Okay, well, there's a pocket watch. West clocks. These are were like very inexpensive pocket watches. You, they're a dime a dozen. Um, they're somewhat reliable though. A lot of times you find them and they still work, but this would have been like a really low end pocket watch. Probably that's why it's in with the kids' stuff here. Uh, we've got some little toy gas pumps. Clock face pump and another little shell gas pump. Got a threaded piece. This looks really familiar. I've had something like that before. I can't remember what it was. Oh, look, there's a somewhat broken Howdy Doody. That's a little terrifying look. Ah, there he goes. Hey, kids, come on down to the farm. Y'all like to ranch? I like to ranch. <laughs> uh, it's as much fun as it was then as it is now. And it's got NBC on them. It must be a little promotional piece. I sure am. I like to ride around on horses. Okay, I'm going to set him down. He takes on a life of his own. This little greyhound ornament. It looks like it would have been off the front of a very deluxe toy at some point. <laughs> it's... Some very incorrect math. Two plus two equals five. <laughs> uh, oh, look, there's um, there's a wheel cover off of a tin toy. And when you went to go visit Santa at Woodward's, they'd give you the Santa pin. So it looks like a few trips were made to go see Santa Claus. Wonder if any of those uh, trips he sat on Santa's lap and asked for some G.I. Joe figures. Zorro advertising pin from 7-Up. A uh, pink elephant popcorn yo-yo. This looks like a coffee spoon. Yeah, it's a Nabob coffee spoon. Just all sorts of uh, random little things. But what fun to go through. You know, you've got a, a pair of scissors and with a whole bunch of pins and buttons and everything else. Keys to dad's car, maybe? Who knows? Wonder what the keys were for. Parts of an airplane. Wow, quite the, quite the little variety of stuff. Some of these are definitely like kidsy sort of jacker, jacker crack prizes. And then others are, uh, well, there's some costume jewelry. The wind up key. Sometimes it'll say the brand name, Penguin. Oh, lots of. Cool. Oh, look, and you know, some random bullets, but these are toy bullets, actually. Those aren't, uh, those aren't real. Those came out of, uh, like a cap gun. Okay, well, that's some stuff. Well, that's it for me, I guess, for now. I've got a bunch of toys I've got to put away. I've got, uh, <laughs> Howdy Doody and I, and a bunch of G.I. Joes, and all this other stuff has got to go all out at the shop today, so I'll be busy all morning getting that done. But um, tough day at the office when you get to play with a bunch of cool old toys. Have a lovely day, guys. Thanks so much for watching, and we'll see ya. We'll see y'all soon. <laughs> Bye, guys.